If you are a service provider and you want to support your customers, first you need to upgrade your beer. And you can go for native IPv6, where you run v4 and v6 throughout the network. Or, maybe even more interesting, you just run IPv4 in the core and transport IPv6 over MTLS. For the enterprise customers, connecting an enterprise customer with, with IPv6 is a piece of cake. You configure v6 addresses on routers and switches, and many reasonably competent service providers are offering this service today in production, no problem. If you want to be a content hosting provider, you have interesting problems. Some firewalls have glitches. For example, Six from Cisco can't provide failover in IPv6 mode, load balancers, applications, and then you have to deal with partial connectivity. So you might be on IPv6, your customer might be on IPv6, but somewhere in the middle the whole thing is broken. And that's why, for example, Google doesn't offer IPv4 and IPv6 by default. If you want to go to Google over v6, you have to use ipv6.google.com. Or you have to enroll in a special program where they test IPv6 connectivity between them and you, and then they reply to requests from your DNS server with both v4 and v6 addresses. Why? Because of this potential block holding in the middle, they have figured out that they could lose 2 to 3 percent of their customers if they give them IPv6 addresses. And they were just not ready to risk that. 